Welcome! In this video, we will go over how to write a lab report for your science course. You may be asking yourself, why is a lab report important or useful? In scientific research, a lab report is an important part of the process to show and explain the work you are doing in a way others can understand. The report can be used by others to repeat the experiment and show its validity. The report also shows that you understand the lab and the concepts behind the lab. In essence, this is a way to communicate the science you have already done as well as the science you are doing. Before writing your lab report, note that there are some guidelines to follow. The language used when writing about what you did and your findings should be clear and decisive. When vague language is seen, it can be misinterpreted, or the lab may be done incorrectly by the next person. Unambiguous language can also help from having an accident occur when the experiment is done by someone else. When writing up the materials and methods, make sure to write the exact amount of any compound, chemical, or item you used. This will make sure the experiment has no room for error in interpretation of amounts, will be done as it should be, and will allow others to use your observations as a guide to see that they are doing the experiment correctly as well. When writing the lab report, make sure you write it in third-person passive voice. This will seem awkward at first, but over time you will get used to doing this. An example of this is, to a round bottom flask, 25.62 milligrams of copper sulfate was added, then 5 milliliters of 5M nitric acid was added dropwise to the flask. When creating a lab report, the work starts before the lab even begins. Here are things to keep in mind before you enter the lab and do the work. Having these in your mind before you do the lab will help ensure that you are successful when doing the lab and also prepares you with the data you need in order to write the lab report. Plan your procedure ahead of time. Keep in mind things that can affect your results, what quantities you need to measure, and what data and results you will need to collect to be able to write your lab report. Have this in your notebook so that when you go to write up the lab, you have all the information you need. There are several pieces to a lab report. It may seem overwhelming at first, but this is a format that most scientists use and recognize. Let's go through each area and talk about what belongs in each section. The title should be straightforward and keep to the point of the experiment you performed. Be sure to also include the course the lab is for, your name, the professor who is teaching the course, the date, and the school you are taking the lab at as well. The next section of a lab report is the abstract. The abstract is a summary of the main ideas in the lab report. This is generally short, usually three to four sentences in length. Make sure you have complete sentences though. The abstract discusses the point of the experiment. Why did you do the experiment? From here, explain what you did and found out by doing the experiment. Last, talk about your results. What do your results tell you? How do you interpret your results? What is the importance of your findings? Numeric findings should be placed in your abstract as well. The abstract should be written after all the other parts are written. Why? This is just a short summary of the lab report itself, so having the report written makes it easier to create your abstract. The introduction is roughly one to two pages and, in essence, introduces the reader to the experiment. Here, tell the reader what you plan to do and why you are planning to do this. Give some background information on the experiment and concepts behind the experiment. If your experiment has any chemical reactions or equations, write about them in your introduction. Also, introduce the reader to any math equations they may encounter in the lab. Each of these questions should be given a number. In your report, you will write the equation and, to the right, place the number in order within parentheses. If you place an equation in your introduction, you must talk about it in your text as well. Also, discuss any important techniques the reader will see in the lab and why you need to use them in the lab. Remember to end the introduction with your hypothesis. Let's look at the hypothesis a bit more closely. We mentioned that in your introduction, there should be a hypothesis. What is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a statement that tentatively tells the reader what you expect to find in your research. This statement is not just something you produce out of a hat, but it is an educated guess based on past knowledge. How do you formulate a hypothesis? Here are some steps to help you formulate a hypothesis. 1. Ask a question. What is the question your research is trying to answer? The question should be focused, specific, and something you can research. 2. Do some background or preliminary research on the topic. 
When creating your hypothesis, base your answer to the question and what you believe on what has been done in the past and what is known about the topic the research is on. 3. Formulate your hypothesis. You've done all your research on the topic and feel you have an answer to the question. Next, write down all your information in a clear and concise sentence. This is the rough draft of your hypothesis. 4. Now that you have a rough draft or idea of your hypothesis, you can refine it. You may be asking, how do I refine it? Ask yourself, is my hypothesis specific and can it be tested? If the answer is no, then you must rewrite it so that it is. Your hypothesis should also have the relevant variables. What are the relevant variables? They are the predicted outcome of the experiment and the group being studied. In the materials and methods area, you will write down all the materials that were used for the experiment and the step-by-step -step instructions for what to do in the experiment. Be sure that you are writing only what you actually did when doing the lab. When writing the materials, make sure to include the exact amounts of materials to be used and how the material was added. Was it via a barrette? Dropwise. With the instructions, be clear and concise in your directions at each step. If any specialty equipment was used, draw a diagram of this. When looking at each step, write a brief observation of what you saw. This will allow the reader to know they are on the right track as they are doing the experiment. The next section of the lab report is the results. Here, you will gather the data, summarize it, and write about your observations. When writing up your observations, make sure to tell the reader what you saw and when. If, for example, you saw a precipitate occur when adding 10.0 grams of something, write that down. Be clear and precise in your observations. Say what you saw and when. This allows the reader to know that they are doing the procedure correctly along the way because they see such and such observation at that step as well. When writing about your data, one of the best ways to gather the data and summarize it is to use tables and graphs if you can. The results section is not where you go into analyzing the data you have. In this area, you are only presenting the data that you obtained. Your discussion section is where you will talk about the results in more detail. Now let's look at what is needed for the graphs and tables in the results area more closely. When placing a graph in the results, they should be inserted as figures. The figures should be labeled in sequential order and there should be a description of what the graph is showing. The graph itself should have labeled axes with the units and a legend or figure key if one is needed. This information about the graph should be reiterated in the caption. The caption goes below the graph. When adding a table into the results, insert it and label it as table with a sequential numerical order. The table should be labeled as table number. The caption should be above the table. Make sure your table has all your headings and appropriate units if needed. Make sure that if you have quantitative data in your table, the numbers have a reasonable number of digits. If the number is too big, use scientific notation to write the number. Anytime you have data that you did not directly measure in your lab, you must show your calculations. These calculations need to have the units shown as well. The calculations should have the equation used to get the data result, a sample calculation with one set of your data being used, and the final answer. So, if you are doing the same calculation continuously, you only need to show the calculation once and then show the results for the rest of your data using this equation. If the calculation is rather complicated and can be done in an Excel spreadsheet, include the Excel spreadsheet in an appendix. When doing this, make sure that in your report, you show a sample calculation and the equations used to get the data in the spreadsheet. Now you are almost done. The introduction, materials and methods, observations, results and calculations are written. It's now time to write the discussion. Here, you will talk about what all the data that you obtained means. Share the key results you got and summarize them. If you had any difficulties in the experiment or errors that led to erroneous results, discuss them here and explain how they affected the results. For example, if you spilled some of your sample, you would discuss how this occurred and how it impacts your results in this area. In discussion, you will offer suggestions for how to improve the lab you just performed. Maybe less time is needed to perform one of the procedures. Here is the place to mention that. If the lab instructions had questions for you to answer, this is the area to answer those. When answering these questions, do not just list the questions and answer them. Have these answers written throughout the discussion area where the answer to your question fits the topic your paragraph is discussing. The discussion area should flow nicely and will be the longest area of the report. 
Your answers to those questions should tell a story that is coherent throughout all of your discussion. Talk about the sources of any errors. Were the errors a result of something you did, or were they random? Describe the errors and their cause. Analyze the data in your errors. Analyze your data and talk about what it means. What does the data tell us about the success of the experiment? Did you do what you said you were going to do? Discuss this and how you met the goal. Now we are at the end, and it is time to write the conclusion. Here, you will briefly summarize your results. This is like the abstract. It should be a paragraph or a little longer. There should be a statement explaining whether you achieved the goals for the lab or not. Next, wrap up the discussion section and tie everything together. When someone picks up this report, they should be able to understand what happened in the lab, even if they only read the abstract and the conclusion. If the reader needs more details, the rest of the report can be read. Now that all the components are written, you can go back and write the abstract. At this point, you now have all the information that needs to be summarized in the abstract. At the end of the report, you should cite all the sources used. These sources should also be cited in the text of your lab report. Remember, Wikipedia should not be listed as a reference. If you used a lab manual to help you and course lectures, cite those. After your references come the appendices. What are the appendices? This is the supplemental materials area where information that is not essential for the report, but can be helpful in giving a better understanding of the research problem will be placed. What should be included in the appendices? Relevant material, such as spectra, raw data, and calculations that do not quite fit well in the lab itself should be noted in the appendices section. The appendices do not count towards the page limit of your lab. Each appendix within your appendices should have a number and title. For example, the first appendix should be labeled as Appendix 1, followed by the title of that appendix. The title should tell the reader what is in that appendix. The appendices should be referred to in the text of the report as well. Remember, the important results and the analysis does not go into the appendices, but into the report. Thank you!